paradigm of stress echocardiography starting from the Paleolithic era is still valid today, and the cornerstone is based on a simple pathophysiological paradigm and echocardiographic sign. The paradigm is the need to focus on epicardia or coronary artery stenosis, which is ischemia producing, one physiological target that was addressed at that time at the beginning of the technique and even today with the same sign of regional wall motion abnormalities. It is interesting that these images were taken for the first paper on pharmacological stress echo in coronary artery disease, which dates back in 1985 and was also possible thanks to the insight of a natural born master, Professor Alessandro Distante, that I had the privilege to meet early in the, my career. At the other side of the spectrum, uh, normal coronary arteries, normal myocardium, and the regional and global hyperkinetic response. What is uh, interesting that this same pattern holds valid also today and remained unchanged for the last 40 years. But what changed recently in the last decade and uh, is profoundly impacting on the utilization trends of different cardiac imaging techniques that now we need to incorporate the concept of sustainability in all our decision in cardiac imaging, in cardiology, and in medicine in general. is a disruptive concept changing the way medicine and certainly cardiac imaging was taught and learned for 30 years. And the concept is very simple at the end, that uh, cost benefit should include on the cost side also the long-term downstream environmental cost of cardiac imaging and not only the direct costs. And the second concept, equally disruptive, is that in the risk-benefit assessment that we every day perform for every diagnostic or therapeutic decision, on the risk side, we should also include the long-term radiation-induced cancer risk. And the reason for this is obvious, that a small individual risk multiplied by millions of examination becomes significant population risk, and on the other side, small wastes and costs multiplied by millions of examination become an unsustainable source of high output failure for our healthcare money. This concept was uh, at the beginning a little bit uh, discussed, but now it is uh, a part of uh, the good mainstream knowledge as reflected by the recent position paper of the American College of Cardiology. Good training in cardiology should create a culture of respect for radiation hazard and the commitment to minimize exposure and maximize protection. The renaissance of stress echo so started from a change in the climate, in economic and cultural climate outside the Diego lab that entered and changed old habits in the cardiac imaging laboratory. The first one was including risk. Also for risks, uh, we learned since our early experience that the truth is not in even large scale efficacy studies from uh, single institutions, but rather from the joint experience of multi centers uh, trials. And uh, in the EPIC and EDIC study, we identified uh, pharmacological stress with an acute risk which was uh, higher than the exercise test. This risk of major side effect was one in uh, 700 for dobutamine stress echo in the paper published on Lancet in 1994, and one in 350 major side effect for dipyridium. So both tests had uh, acute risk that were significantly higher than exercise uh, tests. And at that time, it was a, a bad habit to perform stress echo without knowledge of possible complications and even without the infrastructure of cultural technology for resuscitation facilities. But uh, uh, in the second wind of sustainability was that we had to take into account also long-term risk, and this was uh, at the end, uh, the message of a paper that was possible thanks to the instrumental contribution of the president pro tempore of the CVI, Luigi Badano, uh, with the position paper on medical radiation, the take-home message shared by all 
The cardiac imaging community was a very important one, also a very simple. The priority given to radio protection in every cardiology and cardiac imaging department is an effective strategy for primary prevention of cancer, because our mission is to reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease, but also possibly not to increase the burden of other diseases. A strong indicator of the quality of the cardiology division and the most effective shielding to enhance the safety of patients, doctors, and staff. This was a game changer even for the utilization trend, which is uh, the paradigm of Mayo Clinic uh, in the USA with top gun uh, cardiac imaging laboratories in all uh, aspects. And uh, up to the year 1999, uh, there was a, a 10 to 0 utilization rate for MPI compared to stress ego. And in 2002, MPI, the ratio of MPI to stress ego was 1 to 5. The reason for this, in the words of a former president of the American Heart Association and distinguished nuclear cardiologist, was the increasing concern about radiation exposure and sustainability of the healthcare system, the main drivers of the relative growth of stress ego in this uh, renaissance of the technique. But uh, even more important was uh, the concept that the technique from monotonous became versatile and omnivorous. Uh, so basically we understood, and this also allowed the, the uh, translation, the transfusion in the Stresego lab of some important concepts that were developed over the 10 or 15 years, that ischemic heart disease and even more heart failure and other disease cannot be explained only with the uh, flow limiting, physiological important coronary artery stenosis that was our traditional old fashioned the still important target. We have so many different factors that will affect the different vulnerabilities of the patient as our president said <laughs> The um, prognosis is equally important than diagnosis for cardiac imaging, and it is important to have the left ventricular filling pressure and the vulnerability to any increase in pressure of the alveolar capillary barrier to status of myocardium uh, and the condition of microvascular circulation so important in ischemic heart disease, heart failure, and many other conditions. So there was from the methodological, conceptual, and also logistic point of view, the synopsis of all these parameters in a new standard of stress ego, the ABCD standard, A for a synergy, targeting ischemic uh, heart disease, the physiological stenosis, B for B lines with lung ultrasound, just the shifting of a few centimeters from the apical window, the transducer, the same cardiac transducer, the world of extravascular lung water and lung congestion appeared with B lines, then uh, the contractile reserve within the systolic volume and the ratio of systolic blood pressure and the systolic volume, which is the force, the elastance, an old concept dear to the invasive uh, cardiologist that came non-invasively to the stress ego lab, and certainly the microvascular circulation in the index vessel or left anterior descending artery with Doppler for flowmetry. So A for ischemic or non-ischemic heart, B for B lines, C for contractile reserve, weak or strong heart, and D for cold or warm heart, because as we know, uh, the heart has a erectile physiology, and when you increase uh, flow, you increase the temperature, stiffness, and function. And this allowed also to uh, target different um, vulnerabilities, which will ultimately, eventually, allow to overcome one of the problems of stress ego. The negative uh, predictive value of a test is uh, still associated to an intermediate risk of 1.77% annual heart event rate. B for B lines, this is an example of B lines departing from the plural line with a rocket uh, laser-like appearance up to the end of the screen, and uh, at rest you see mild number of B lines, two to three, during stress eight to 10, and this is exactly the shape of lung water, an old dream for uh, the cardiologist that now becomes true. We can detect at an early stage the lung water cascade much before the late uh, clinical congestion, crackles and pulmonary edema. This has an important prognostic value 
additive and incremental over regional wall motion abnormalities, stress B lines in patients without regional wall motion abnormalities identify patients at risk not only for uh, major events but even for death in uh, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, but similar data have been obtained in other types of heart failure. C for contractile reserve. This is again an old concept that the dilation is bad for your heart during stress with MPI since 40 years and then with echocardiography. But if you combine the systolic blood pressure with cuff manometer with end systolic volume, you have a physiologically immaculate load independent, heart rate independent assessment of contractility, the real elastance of the Suga Sagawa experimental model, and uh, this is a case of ischemic heart, obvious regional uh, septoapical lachinisha, but also dilation of uh, the heart during stress, indicating a weak heart with reduced force. Uh, this was tested in the most extreme and challenging uh, situation, patients with brain death that were a candidate to be marginal donors, as you know in Italy, but in Europe, in all Western world, there is a dramatic shortage of uh, heart for heart transplant. And uh, in Italy now, in, uh, there are 50 patients that have been recruited with pharmacological stress echo in this way. When the test is negative, there is green light to donation. And uh, when the test was positive, even without regional wall motion abnormalities, but only for reduced left ventricular contractile reserve, at cardioautoptic verification, there was either uh, coronary artery stenosis or um, scar or multifocal necrosis of the left ventricle. So with the hardest of all gold standard, this uh, parameter of force served us well and uh, deserved to be incorporated in the new standard of quadrupole imaging. And the D for Doppler-based coronary flow velocity reserve in an index vessel where it has a high feasibility, close to 95% with vasodilator, but uh, up to 80% with other forms of pharmacological and physical stresses. And since 10 years, it has been in European consensus statement recommended to perform dual imaging. Very simple to measure, peak uh, diastolic flow at rest and peak stress, and the ratio of the two peak diastolic flow velocity is coronary flow reserve. Uh, interestingly, both the force and coronary flow velocity can be added to titrate the risk in patients with negative wall motion abnormalities. This study was performed in diabetic patients who are often at high risk and can be uh, wolf in sheep's clothes from the prognostic viewpoint. You label them at a low risk on the basis of absence of regional wall motion abnormalities, but they do have problems uh, in the follow-up. But as you can see from this uh, slide, the risk in uh, a patient with uh, no wall motion abnormalities, preserved force and preserved coronary flow velocity reserve is extremely low at intermediate follow-up. The risk is a three times higher when you have uh, one parameter abnormal between flow and function and seven times higher when you have uh, both uh, reduced force and uh, uh, cold heart with reduced coronary flow velocity reserve. So the new paradigm of response during stress, you can have a normal response with non-ischemic heart without regional wall motion abnormalities, a dry lung with A lines at lung ultrasound, strong heart with small end systolic volume and warm heart with normal increase in flow, or you can have at the other side of the spectrum an ischemic heart with a wet lung, weak heart dilated and the systolic volume, and the cold heart with reduced below 2.0 increase in flow velocity. And this expands dramatically the risk stratification capability presently on the basis of guidelines um, based on shades of gray. We have less than 1% theoretical heart event rate per year in the absence of wall motion abnormalities. Greater than 3% event rate with more than three segments, but from this black and white unidimensional codification, you go to a spectrum of response from red code with ischemia, wet, weak, cold heart with B lines, 
uh, the pressed contractile reserve and the pressed the coronary flow velocity reserve to the green code of a non-ischemic, dry, strong, warm heart. And then uh, uh, you go from one patient to all patients. We said before, we have become in Streseco laboratory omnivorous, not only CAD, but valvular, uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, congenital uh, heart disease, even uh, extreme physiology, because Bill Hines are uh, a sign present sometimes in athletes, divers, and climbers. Secondary pulmonary hypertension, heart transplant patient. For each patient, there is the stress and the parameter in the evaluating and emphasizing one of the staggering advantages of stress ego, that is versatility. And this was well focused by the recent clinical recommendation, but we have the suggestion that the, the, these parameters can be very important in situations beyond the coronary artery disease, from cardiomyopathies to congenital heart disease and pulmonary hypertension, but the information regarding the impact of testing and the database supporting our clinical use is uh, largely missing today. And we need to do this, but as Maurizio told you, Italians do stress ego better. And once again, uh, 20 or 30 years after the first wave uh, generation of multi-center trials, epic, edic, and so on, uh, we started again. This time with the support, uh, pivotal support of the National Society of uh, cardiovascular echography with stress echo 2020 in uh, 10 protocols in 10 different diseases because in the last year the old landline telephone with one parameter for one patient all based on regional wall motion abnormality was changed into a smartphone with a myriad applications so we have to choose the right one for the patient's pre-CRT patients with depressed ejection fraction, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, preserved ejection fraction, valvular heart disease, outdoor stress ego with extreme physiology setting in an ecologic stress when the stress goes to the patient and not the patient goes to the stress ego lab, repair the tetralogy of Fallot, uh, at risk borderline and early pulmonary hypertension, the new standard in ischemic heart disease and uh, special study in phenotype negative carriers of genetically transmitted disease. And we were lucky enough to have the best knowledge in Italy and uh, perhaps in Europe that were generously collaborating in this study. And therefore, we have to go from efficacy to effectiveness studies once again. But the registry should be tempered by a, a very simple concept that is so simple that sometimes it is forgotten. That in a registry you cannot put all kind of commerce without any upstream quality control because otherwise you will have, we had in the past and we still will have in the future, some booyah bass effect. Stress echo are like a booyah bass, a zuppa di pesce in Italian, no matter how much seafood or recruiting center is added, one tainted the fish in a reliable center generating inconsistent reading will spoil the pot. And therefore, we had to have centers that were so ambitious that they want to change the current standards for diagnosis and treatment, and so humble that they accepted, even if a president of national or international societies, the quality control upstream to entering the study. But this has advantages because it generates in a very short time unique information. For instance, stress B lines will be published next February on JACC imaging. And as you know, as you see, B lines are present with extensive uh, wall motion dysfunction, but also with normal function. And uh, what is the, the next wave? We have to change an opinion into a number. And uh, this is best done in the for framework of selected studies. For instance, a new therapy on no option angina has been developed with our peaceful Serbian army and friends of uh, Maria, Anna, Branco, and friends after two weeks of IV heparin plus exercise. There is an improvement in chest pain, ST depression, and function. And you need the stress echo dress to kill with quantitative strain deformation imaging to convince the reviewer of a, a, an important innovation in therapy. But in the fourth, forthcoming years, all parameters, A, B, C, D, will become from uh, subjective, purely quantitative. Perhaps it's uh, too ambitious, 
but uh, we have seen this miracle already in the past. Under wide clouds, Cielo di Pisa, out of all this beauty, something must come. Thank you.